Wyman, and today we're going to begin a restoration series on a Gewehr 43. This one has been sporterized, as you can tell, but I believe that I can save it. So if you want to come in closer, we can look at some of the damage that has been done to this poor rifle. As you can see, the top fore end is missing, the part that covers up your gas system. It's completely gone. He's also cut the stock and rounded it off. That's something that was very popular with guys who used to do sportizations after World War II for some reason. And the location for your sling has been filled in. And he has added some points for a sling attachment. And that is pretty much all he did. So he destroyed the stock, but the rest of the rifle is complete and all matching. This is a Walther made gun and it is a pretty cool thing to have it all matching even if the stock is beat up. Okay, so like I mentioned, so the stock's all beat up, but all of the internals are original. But, but that can actually pose a bit of a problem with G43s, as I'll show you. On these original G43s, they were incredibly overgassed. They had had some issues with the Gewehr 41 like I just showed on, on, on my last video. With the Russian winter and all the freezing and the corrosion and all the cleaning issues with the whole gas trap system that was on the muzzle that the guns quit working a lot of the times when they were uh, fouled up and in those bad conditions so the German engineers directly took the Tokarev gas system off of the SVT 40 and added it to a G41 to create the G43 but in an attempt to make sure that these rifles worked in freezing conditions and frozen conditions and really bad conditions, they overgassed the gas system. So if you use these rifles too much with the original uh, ammo without replacing the gas system, they will beat themselves to death. They'll crack bolts, they'll crack out the back, and when these things do fail, sometimes they fail catastrophically and they fly off the back of the gun. So, it's cool that it is original, but I'm going to have to replace it. So, I can show you how that works. This bolt does lock back on an empty magazine. And right here, you can actually lock the bolt all the way back to make sure it's completely locked. And how this works is the, the bullet is fired, gas is tapped off. This is pretty, this should be pretty um, familiar to people who work with firearms, but back in the 30s and 40s, this was a pretty revolutionary revolutionary idea. The gas, this is a short stroke gas piston, so it's not attached to the bolt. Under gas pressure, the piston strikes the bolt, causes it to reciprocate backward, and then spring pressure pushes it back forward, loads up another round. So to take this apart so we can look at it, this is kind of a three piece affair. You take off the middle piece, the top the piston, and then the rest of the spring comes out. And this rifle is actually a little bit dirty, so I'm guessing it was fired a little bit ago, but not by me. I'm not sure if you can see, because the light is pretty horrendous, but the actual gas port on this rifle is enormous. So almost 100% of the gas that can be tapped off is tapped off to go into the system, and it is incredibly overpowered, like I've mentioned once before and it will beat itself to death. So, with a replacement gas port here, th this screws off, you screw on a new one, and it will have different aperture sizes, basically, for your gas piston. And I'm gonna have to pick one of those up to make sure that I can get this thing reciprocating without beating itself to death. Also, here on the bolt, it's kinda cool how this actually comes apart. We're just going to dive in a little, little further. You have this little button on the back of the rifle. You, I'm going to push this in, and the entire bolt assembly is going to lift off under spring pressure. So it can be kind of tight, but I'll push that in, and the entire bolt lifts off. Take the magazine out, and that's it. This is a completely field stripped G43, and it's 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 pretty empty in there without everything. But you got to be careful with the bolt assembly on the bolt carrier right now because all this is under spring tension. And 
as you can see, this one already has a little bit of damage on the bottom of this, but I, I've been checking it out and I think it's I think it's gonna be okay as long as I make sure it's not slamming. You wanna make sure that you can capture all the bolt pieces and then this is a little bit of a finagly thing. Oh yeah, let's see if I can, see if I can try, I'm trying to get it on camera. We'll try. I'm gonna pull this back a little bit, release. And everything comes out. This has a dual recoil spring that fits inside and you can see how the locking system works here. It's a flapper system, kind of like a Degterev, where when the piston strikes this, causes those to come back inside and unlocks the firearm. And when I was inspecting this, there's no cracks, no damage to the actual bolt assembly. So that's actually a really good thing. So luckily, when I bought this rifle, it did come with some goodies, some hard to find goodies. I have some new Wolf Springs for the recoil system, for the recoil springs on the back. It does, it does take, take those two. So those are gonna be going back to original spec. Before I drop anything. Slide it back in there. Also have a cleaning rod. And funny enough, there is still the place, the, the cleaning rod will actually screw in and stay there if I wanted to. So he didn't cut it all the way off. But so I still have the cleaning rod. And kind of a harder thing to find from what I've been told is I have this nose cap and the spring. I'm not gonna fish it out, but the spring that that goes along with it. So your nose cap is going to fit on here, hold in both of the pieces of the, of the wood, and your cleaning rod goes, goes in there, and it's all together. So I really have a little bit of a head start on the rebuild process for this rifle. So mainly, the two, com or two or three components that I have to get to get this thing working correctly is going to be the new gas system so that it doesn't beat itself up, a new or good repro stock so that it can look original and I believe I want to replace this one last spring on the gas piston but other than that where I think that we're gonna be running so let me assemble this thing real quick why don't you come in it can be a little bit of a finagly mess but I'm not sure how many people are doing this on the internet so you slide that in you can see how it sticks in like that then you're gonna take your bolt. This can be a real bear sometimes. Okay, so one second. Like I said, you are fighting that spring pressure. Pull it back one more time. You wanna make sure that those flaps are out of the way, is what I'm seeing. So make sure. There we go. So the flaps, you have to pull that back, and then you can lock the bolt back together. And see, it's a little bit of a tuck and pinch, but it works. Then you lay the bolt like that, press in this rear button, and it just drops right in. And while it's open, I'm gonna replace the gas system Here's the piece with the spring. Oops, I'm gonna put the magazine back in so it balances a little better. Okay. There's your spring. Here's the other side of the piston. So I'm actually going to put this side of the piston in first. And then you wanna pull everything back, put in the connecting rod. Line it back up, and it's back into function. So, it's working. Another few things that may not be known on the, on the G43 is these do have detachable box magazines, but they weren't really intended to be used like a modern firearm where you're always switching mags. I know that some sometimes these were issued with extra mags, but how they're really supposed to be used is with a stripper clip, as far as I can tell. You have a stripper clip a stripper clip guide there 
so you load it in um, in, a, in two five round stripper clips for a 10 round magazine. So, and another kind of a cool th cool addition here. Some, some were automatic, some were not. As far as I can tell, I know some on the G43 were automatic. This is your, this is your, your dust cover. So you can push it forward with your thumb and it'll protect the guts and the springs of gink. But once you fire and the bolt reciprocates, it pushes the, 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 the dust cover back. So kind of a weird little handy design. And the safety on these G43s and on the Gewehr uh, 41, this is on safe. You flip that wing and now it's on fire. So it's a little bit of a two-handed operation, but I like that it's a very visual thing that you can see whether it's on or if it's off. Also, luckily, this still has the original butt stock, which uh, some of them did not. Some people really cut up the stocks, but this one does have the original butt stock, so that's a good thing. So, um, oh yes, and one last thing. Let's look at the markings real quick, just so you can see them. Like I was saying earlier, this is an all matching gun, 2797, 2797, and all of the original, I mean, all of the internal parts also have those same numbers on them. And you see I have a G43 marking on top of some Waffen Ops. Some of these were marked K43, so this is kind of cool that it's an actual G43 marked gun. And it's a little bit hard for you to see maybe, but it says AC44, and the AC denotes that it is a Walther made gun. Also, you could probably tell because of the condition, this is a repro mag, but it is a really nice repro mag. It seems to have some of the original Waffen Ops, and it does feel like a a actual a really good make because original makes for these are three five hundred dollars depending on where you're buying them also one more thing all of these g43s came equipped with a scope rail so you do you do see some in theater where they would add in the scope on the top and that would be kind of a cool addition at some point i might i might pick pick one of those repro ones up and something that a lot of people notice is these G and K43 rifles are really rough looking. They they're they don't look like a normal German firearm. And that's because by this point in the war they were rushing to get a lot of guns out and they and they finished all the in, internal parts, but why take the time in the middle of being shelled by Soviets and Allied, I mean and Americans and British and everyone else, why take the time to make sure that all this is super pretty? So these came out of the forgings and they just in, uh, finished the internal parts, but they did not spend any time to finish the external um, on especially some of these larger pieces. So with a little time, a little money, and a little determination, I believe that I can get this old girl back to her original glory. So thanks for watching, and I've been Ivan with Forest Firearms.